This week we're going to add some different kinds of peppers, both some bell peppers and some sweet minis and some jalapenos to all our produce that we were making. So stay tuned and see how easy it is to make peppers. Alright, this week's project, our food project, is going to be peppers. And originally I was going to do separate videos for the bell peppers and the smaller peppers and I realized that the colors are all the same. Pretty, they're pretty close anyway and by the time you make the different sizes it seems silly to divide it into two videos. So today we're going to make multiple kinds of peppers in four colors. So I have, I bought some peppers at the grocery store, bought some bell peppers. I would have gotten a red one but the red one's just didn't look very good. And I got these sweet minis. I love these sweet mini peppers. Um, they're one of my favorite summertime snacks. So I got those. And they come in the same colors. And the red here is the same color as the red bell peppers were. And jalapenos are always in my refrigerator too. So we're going to make some jalapenos too. So in addition to color, we need to look at size and shape. So I measured my peppers and I really looked at them to get a size and a shape, idea of size and shape here for my peppers. So really look at your peppers. It does help to have them on hand to realize what, what their shapes are, what their sizes are, how it looks in your hand. Sometimes it helps to um, have a doll that, has, that you can put something in her hand and see if it looks about the same size in her hand as the real thing does in your hand. So let's talk about clay colors. Let's talk about the yellow. The yellow is an easy one because the yellow is equal parts transparent clay. I'm using Fimo Transparent White. All my clays today are the are Fimo brands. So I'm using equal parts transparent white and sunflower yellow. And when that's mixed together and baked off, this is my raw clay, when it gets baked off it's really a really close match to the yellow peppers. For the red peppers, again, we need equal parts of colored clay and transparent. I'm using transparent white and just plain old Fimo red. It makes a really good match and bakes up really nicely for our red peppers. For our orange peppers, I found that the clay I had that matched best was Fimo Fimo Tangerine. It's mixed up, it looks like this, and it bakes up into a nice orange pepper color. Now for the green, I was so happy with the red, yellow, and orange. I was able to mix a single color with transparent, and it matched really nicely. Then I got to the green color. And my in first instinct was, oh, it'll be leaf green. But when I mixed leaf green and transparent, it was just too dark. My other greens were too light. So what I ended up doing was mixing equal parts of leaf green and tropical green. Because that was the one I had on my out. Mix those together, equal parts. And then I mixed that with the uh, transparent. And I came up with a really good match to my green peppers. When it's baked off, it's a really close match. Remember, these will change slightly when they bake. I usually like to bake off a sample of my clay before I start a project like this. I'll take a little bit, you know, like a little piece like this, and I'll bake it on a paper plate just to make sure I'm getting the color I want. Because some colors shift in the oven a lot. Some only a little, some none at all, some shift a lot. So find your clay colors, get your clay mixed up, and I'm going to put the peppers away. I'm going to set up and we're going to make some peppers. I've rolled out some of our green pepper color clay into a thin sheet and I've stuck it down to my work tile. We're going to use that and we're also going to use a snake. I've rolled a fairly skinny snake of our green clay also and this will be our stems and this is the little area that the stem attaches to on the pepper. Now, I'm going to cut, I've rolled this out to about a quarter inch. I found when I measured my peppers, they were three, three and a half inches tall. 
and they were about three inches across and about two inches across at the bottom, which translates to about a quarter inch at the top and about a quarter inch long. So we're going to make a little ball and then flatten it a little. It's okay if it's not perfect yet. We're going to take a really small ball stylus and we're going to stick our pepper right onto that ball stylus. And then we're going to get the cat hair off of it. All right. Now, taking my dental pick tool. Any sharp tool that you're comfortable using will work here. And peppers usually have, and if it won't stay on the ball stylus, that's okay. We needed that to make that little dip. I'm going to make kind of a cross at the bottom to make this shape. Now we're not going to worry about that hole at the top. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take some of this green clay and we're going to shove that in that hole and we're going to take this green here that's going to be our stem and bell peppers can have some stem on them but it's a lot of times it's really cute a lot of times they kind of curl if you noticed on my real peppers how some of the stems were kind of curling and there oops I just dropped it. And if it's gotten kind of fingerprinty, this is kind of a soft clay. Kind of roll it a little bit on the table, on your tray. Kind of work off some of those fingerprints. So let's see if we can do this again. Cut a piece. Let's see if I can get closer. Let's see how we do. Alright, ball. Roll it. Have it roll away. <laughs> ball stylus. Oops, where's the camera? Piece of the green flat clay. If you need to use two pieces to cover that hole up, that's fine. On the bell peppers, the that end is pretty big sometimes. And you can cut a longer stem or a shorter stem and try to vary it. Don't cut them all the same length. Don't curl them all the same way. Have some of them coming out straight. There. Now we have a bell pepper. Let's find it that where you can see it. There. Let's do a couple more. I'll back the camera back up a little bit so you can get a better overview of what's going on. Got our pepper. This one I'll make a little bigger. Roll. So it's round. And remember, they're usually skinnier at the bottom than they are at the top. By pushing this ball stylus in, we're actually helping with that because it's pushing this top part out, and you're kind of, I'm kind of holding the bottom so that it can't squeeze out as much as the top. You can also, some of the peppers should probably have some marks coming from the top. I'm going to hold it on there. Sometimes they don't want to come off, you just have to convince them. When you get these all made, this size pepper should bake for about seven minutes. 
So I'm going to finish making a bunch more peppers to fill my basket, and then I'll be back. Alright, so now it's time to make some of the little sweet peppers. And they'll be made about the same way as a jalapeno. You'll just do, a, obviously, the other colors. So the sweet peppers I'm making in yellow, red, and orange. And today I'm going to show you, on the video, I'll show you how to make them with the orange clay. So this is a piece, this is a prep we have to do ahead. This is our same green that we used for our stem and that we'll use for the green peppers. And I made a really thin snake and I baked it. I only baked this for about three minutes, just enough to get it hard. Um, it makes it going, going into the peppers a lot easier. And cut it into little pieces. And you're going to need a lot more of these little stem pieces than you think you will, because they run away. They, I have lost so many of those on my floor, and my floor is green, so they're lost. Um, and then I've rolled out some of our orange clay that we're making the peppers out of and I'll just cut it's a little less than an eighth of an inch in diameter and that's what you need for this. We'll cut little segments. Remember these peppers come in different sizes and I've also seen some that are flat like I showed you in the first part of the video and some that are more shaped like the jalapenos and more that size and shape and that's how I'm ending up making them for the the baskets here because when I tried to make them flat they just looked weird. So I cut that and I kind of just rolled it in my hand a little bit just enough to make those ends rounded. Now I've got my same green clay here that I had for the top of the bell peppers. And I'll do this here and then we'll zero in and do another one. I'm going to put it on, and I cut just a little, kind of a, not quite a square, but whatever, a little shape, and kind of push it down on the top with my pointed tool. Now tweezers. These are ugly tweezers, but they're the ones that hold the best. Pick up one of your pieces, and just poke in, and then push. You want most of that down into the pepper, and there, we have a little pepper. It's funny because the red ones look kind of like tomatoes and the orange ones look kind of like carrots, but when you bend it a little bit, it looks more like a pepper. So let's see if I can get closer. Oops, wrong way. Let's see. There. All right, so we've got our piece of orange clay. I'm just going to roll it just a little bit just to round it. And these come in different sizes and different shapes, so don't be too, you know, look at the ones, all the different shapes in the grocery store and just kind of go with it. Go with the shape your clay wants to be. Now you stick that little top on where the stem comes out of. Kind of push it down. Find my stems. Now, let's see if I can get this in here. Into that green part and pushed in and then I kind of roll between my fingers to kind of adhere it all and then kind of bend it and kind of smush it a little. And that's our orange peppers. Oops, where did it go? There it is. Let me try that again. Let's make sure we get the whole thing. I'm not sure if I got that last one in the camera. I can't see what I'm doing and see what's in the camera at the same time. That's a challenge. All right, so see I just rounded the ends a little bit. Now this step it's okay if you smush it because some of those peppers were really flat. Remember, some peppers are really weird shaped. Just kind of stick this little green part on. And this is a little out of scale. The green part on the top is bigger than it really is in real life, but that way it shows up. If we went with it as small as they are in real life, you probably wouldn't see it on the miniature. Push that in. If you have some that don't go in all the way the way you want them to, just decide that's the side that's going to go towards the table or the counter or, you know, whatever. But they're that easy. So I'm going to make a whole bunch more orange little peppers and yellow ones and red ones and finish my bell peppers. And I'll do the same thing with the green clay and make some jalapenos. And then I'll show you the finishing step 
because we're going to put a clear finish on these to make them just a little bit glossy, kind of a satiny. So I'll be back to do that in a little bit. All right, so I've got my peppers all made. I've got this basket of orange ones. And there's a lot of peppers there. And I've also made yellow and red and then the baby, the little sweet mini peppers and green and the jalapenos. And you might notice that the jalapenos and the yellow peppers have a little bit of a gloss to them. That's our next step. You see how much, they look so much more real when you get the glossy coat to them, but not too glossy. That's one of my pet peeves about a lot of miniature food is people pour on tons and tons of really shiny clear finish and then their food starts to look like plastic. What I've used here is something that we've used in polymer food making for, oh gosh, years and years and years. Now if you can't get this or you're not comfortable with it, you can use any kind of a satin finish. You could use a satin Sculpey glaze. You could use a satin Mod Podge. What I like is oops, Future Floor Finish. And it's been, this is an old bottle. I've only used this much. And I've had this bottle for, well, I looked online, they changed the, the name of it in 2007. I've probably had this bottle for probably 10 years or more, maybe more than that, maybe almost 15, and I've only used a little bit. I only use it for my clay. It just takes a little bit. And right now it's um, sold under the the Pledge brand, but it still says like with future finish or something and it has this little three color design on it. So I'm going to show you how to use this and one of the advantages of this is it will glue your stuff together. So I'm going to dump my peppers that I want to color, I want to finish down in my container. I'm just using a yogurt container, whatever you've got. And it just takes a few drops. Just a little bit. That's way more than I'm going to need here for this. And then get something to stir with. I'm using just a wooden skewer. And we're just going to stir around until they're coated. And now I've got just a plate that I put some um, aluminum foil on. And what I want to do is I want to get them out here and get them at least started to dry. Now, if you want to display these not in a container. If you want these to be displayed loose, then keep coming back and stirring these until they're all the way dry. Kind of spread them out and they'll dry and you can use them separated. But because I want mine to actually stick together, like these yellow ones. Oops, they don't completely stick together but they'll be a little bit sticky. They're a little bit tacky right now. So if I put them in while they're still wet, the floor finish will kind of glue them together, but look, glue them together lightly. You could actually pull them apart if you needed to for some reason. And this just gives a nice warm glow. It's really my preferred finish for a lot of the produce that we want to have give a slight shine to. I use the Future Floor Polish on apples and pears, the peppers. I even went back and did a coat of it on my cherries I made last week. So I'll try to remember to get another picture so you can see those with their their clear coat on. They look a lot better. I realized when I was working on this that my peppers just look, or my um, cherries just looked a little too flat. So I put some floor finish on them too. I'm going to kind of lay them out the way you want them. If you've got one that you're particularly proud of, you might want to put it on top. But that's all there is to getting the clear finish on. And then when this dries, I'll take some pictures and show you the completed what we've got completed. All right, so here are the completed peppers in their containers. Um, I hope you enjoyed this project. I will take some photos and put after this segment, but. Remember to request what you want to see on videos. Check us out on Facebook if you haven't. And I'd love to see pictures of what you've done. So until next time, have fun with those minis. Bye.